that was my purpose as a coder. Um, I've moved on to more boring things since then. Uh, so, <clears throat> my talks on single page JavaScript websites and optimizing them for web crawlers. Uh, it sort of surprised me when I first started making a website that there's not actually a lot of literature on this topic. Um, it's not something programmers probably get excited about writing about, but um, I've been trying to sort of collect a lot of documents I find and put it into a GitHub project to help other developers uh, when they're making their single page JavaScript sites. So, <clears throat> a little bit about me and Node.js. Um, I started uh, writing software about four years ago. Um, I started using Node about three years ago. And the reason I started using Node was actually to write web crawlers. Um, so somebody made this really cool project called Readability. Um, it was a browser plugin, and then someone wrapped it up and put, made it a um, NPM project. So I started writing web crawlers at a company I started with some college friends called Lucky Sort, which was actually just recently acquired by Twitter. And then I did some freelance work. And then I got into client-side JavaScript about a year ago. Um, I had been doing strictly server-side work and um, was tired of all the front-end developers getting the credit, so nudged my way in there as well. And so I currently work at a company called DJZ. It's a media and music technology company based in San Francisco. Um, we make iOS apps. We have three of those now. Um, and we have a, a website that is made in <coughs> WordPress, <coughs> which uh, walking in the door, that was not a fun thing. So I, I walked in the door, and they were like, we want a music player. Um, and I was like, well, I want to make you a music player. Um, and so I stepped onto the web stack. It was in WordPress. And what I had to do, oh, go back. Um, so unfortunately, because of the architecture of the, oh, internet. Um, well, this isn't going to be fun. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to get the internet connection back. Um, OK, there we go. Unfortunately, because of the architecture of the site, um, I couldn't make a persistent player on the website easily. So instead, I made my first, um, first single page JavaScript app. Um, and so that was my first app in Backbone. Um, and then I stuck with uh, DJZ for a while. Let's see. Yeah, I'm back where I am. So I stuck with DJZ, and I eventually uh, went from being a contractor to one of the lead web developers. And one of the things I wanted to do was make, obviously, a persistent music player on the site, because it's a music company. It's for consumers. So you want to have the best uh, media playing experience. And I sort of fought back a little bit with project managers, because they're like, well, can we turn the WordPress site into that? And it was like, yeah, we could do. We could do a uh, you know, parent frame, child frame architecture, and that would be really unpleasant. And you would end up making this massive communication layer between the two. Um, so you know, at the end of the day, I got my way. Um, I basically redid the site in AngularJS, which is a really fantastic framework if you're looking for a JavaScript framework. Um, and uh, so when, when I first uh, researched um, creating the site this way, I realized pretty quickly that this was going to destroy all the wonderful SEO work we had been doing, um, and that was a problem. And uh, so I started looking into how um, other people that make uh, single page JavaScript sites, um, what they do to solve this problem. And it's, it's actually pretty gross, but um, it's gotten a lot nicer with um, Node.js. And um, Oh, this is so. Um, I went. I looked into client-side architectures. I picked AngularJS. Some other good ones are Backbone.js, Ember.js, um, and decided to use um, sort of a software as a service model where we built an API. Um, we already had an API supporting our iPhone clients, so beef that up some. 
and then got into the web crawler component. Um, and so this is what you typically do. I'm sure most of you are familiar with how this works. Google says, hey, I'm Google. Give me your content. And you serve it back to it. And it reads the raw text content from the DOM. And everyone's good. Uh, with a single page JavaScript site, you send back Google the JavaScript. And it doesn't really know what to do with it. Um, it thinks your site has nothing on there. Um, so a really simple web page oop, go back. Uh, would look like Um, so if I were to run this, uh, what Google would see, uh, this is not the right one. It would look like this to Google and then actually. So instead of seeing what you just saw, it, Google would see that. And we want Google to know that we have content and images and wonderful things for users to look at. Um, so um, uh, a really great article is written by this guy, uh, Year of Moo. He uh, created a, a, uh, a method for uh, serving uh, content that a headless browser evaluates uh, back to Google. And so he created an SEO server um, and a protocol for uh, rendering your AJAX and sending it back to Google. Um, he uses PhantomJS, which is a really awesome um, resource. It's not actually a known module. It's a, a full headless browser that's running WebKit. And a lot of people are, have been doing really awesome projects uh, to use it for testing. Um, another use case for this now is writing an SEO server. Um, so what you can do to include it in your Node.js framework is um, you can call it as a child process. Um, so here I'm using Express uh, to serve content. And I'm calling Phantom as a child process um, and passing in a callback to handle the data. And then, um, or you can simply run it as a script. Uh, optimally, you'll run this over your website and create HTML snapshots and this serve this from your web server or CDN. Um, Google does this weird thing, actually, where it has a protocol for AJAX sites. And so um, uh, traditionally, or originally, it used the hash bang. So if you guys remember Twitter, uh, used to be a single page site, and now it redirects to here. And now Twitter is all server side uh, for optimization regions. Um, really, I can't think of a good reason to make a single page JavaScript site because you end up doing a ton of like uh, extra work. Um, if you have a SaaS architecture, you have to deal with cores, you have to deal with IE9 and cores, which is like very unpleasant. Uh, it, you don't want to make a RESTful API because really, JSONP is like the easiest way to do things, and you know you feel bad at the end of the day for your server code. Um, so it's not it's not actually the best of choices, but uh, for certain UX reasons, um, it is the right choice. Um, and I was kind of happy to have an excuse to use it. Um, so yeah, Google has this um, protocol for uh, sending AJAX content. And uh, it's pretty simple. It swaps out. You tell Google with a meta tag, hey, I'm an AJAX site. Um, Google's like, OK, I'll hit your server again at this other route. And then um, you just serve the snapshot at that route. Um, you can whitelist other user agents. Uh, so another issue for us is Facebook. Um, Facebook has almost no documentation on their scrapers, but fortunately, Stack Overflow does. And so you can pull out their user agent strings from there. Um, they really only hit your site when you copy a URL and put it into the share box. Um, so if you want to share on Facebook, you need to deal with them as well. Um, here's some resources that you cannot read, it seems, um, which I'll put up online. Uh, and I am working currently on basically combining 
No. Mm. One second. A couple of interesting projects I've found along the way, if I can find them. Um, so I've been basically combining um, this guy's SEO server project, which uses Express and calls a phantom child process, um, along with uh, this Angular SEO project, which is really cool. So you can actually explicitly say when you want it to return the data. Um, so normally, you would just have your SEO server, and you'd set a timeout and just hope that your AJAX calls um, were finished by the time it sent the data back. But you can actually add a little bit more safety to that by uh, explicitly stating in the HTML when the snapshot is ready. So you let Phantom run, it's going to listen for a certain attribute on the body to say snapshot's ready, and then, and then it'll know it's done and it's ready to be served. Um, so I'm combining um, this Express SEO project with um, this client signed component, as well as um, I'm probably going to turn it into uh, a project like Angular Express Seed, which is a really good way to just get started um, using Express and Angular. And so right now, that's going into a repository, which I'll put links to um, on Twitter after the talk. Um, you can find me on Twitter, find me on GitHub. Uh, we're hiring. We want a back-end developer. If you live in San Francisco, you should come work for us. We have uh, a really fun office. Um, and I think I went through that probably too quickly. Um, so uh, I don't know if there's any questions. Yeah, so um, yeah, so my the site I'm working on now, which hasn't isn't live yet, but um, so this is our current WordPress site. Um, oh, we just launched the app today. I was going to advertise for that a little bit. Um, so this is our current WordPress site. And um, so like, this is our current beta version. And it uses the history API. Um, Angular has support for that, so I can just go to the routes. Um, loads just fine. Um, the nice thing about single page JavaScript sites as well, besides if you're, if you're really nitpicky designer front end person, it, it is nice because like your header won't flash and reload, um, little tiny things, but it's not, it's not the most practical unless you have like a really good use case. So SoundCloud for instance is, um, a background app, um, and they just launched a couple months or maybe four months ago now, and you can like just like navigate around very easily, start something else. Um, so kind of moving towards that direction. Um, So like hi, like a hijack me method or yeah um yeah I mean that's it in that case you won't you still need to distinguish between um, crawler hits and and um, like human hits, though, right? Uh, no, I haven't looked into that. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>